Okay, good afternoon. My name is uh, Timothy Rogers. I'm a partner with the law offices of Polsky, Schuldice, and Rosen. We're located in Rockville Center, New York. I'm uh, here today, and our practice is limited to the uh, areas of workers' compensation. I am here today to speak about uh, occupational hearing loss, uh, how, it, how it comes about, and how to proceed in a claim for occupational hearing loss. So just uh, jumping right into it, um, occupational hearing loss is covered under the workers' compensation law under section 49AA to 49HH. Um, basically, if you are an employee that is subject to what they call a harmful, noisy environment during the course of your employment, after you are removed from that harmful, noisy environment, or you leave the employment, you may then uh, proceed to investigate as to whether you would be entitled to file a claim for occupational hearing loss. So how does that go about? So first of all, um, removal from the harmful, noisy environment can take place in one of two ways. You can leave the employment, or you can be given uh, effective, what they call hearing protection, or the hearing muffs that people usually see. If they are effective to completely remove, remove you from the uh, harmful, noisy environment, then at that point, uh, you can proceed to investigate as to whether you have a claim for occupational hearing loss. The reason I say investigate is, is because um, you don't actually know if you have occupational hearing loss until you're examined by a doctor, and the doctor then uh, reviews your exam, gives you an audiogram, and then the doctor will tell you whether that falls within the scope of occupational hearing loss. So after you're removed from the harm, what they call harmful noisy environment, just remember it's just a noisy environment uh, is not necessarily sufficient to constitute or to bring about occupational hearing loss. The statute is specific and it needs to be a harmful, noisy environment. A lot of those people or people that are exposed to those type of things are people that work at the airlines, people that work as mechanics, people that work as bus drivers or in the uh, garages that, um, you know, have big trucks, things like that. People that work around oil burners all day. Um, those people are exposed to what they call a harmful, noisy environment. Obviously, there can be many, many variations other than the examples I just gave, but um, if you think that you may have a hearing loss, uh, first thing is, is that after you're removed from the harmful noisy environment, you have to wait a period of uh, 90 days, three months, uh, before you can be tested. The law allows that period so that your hearing may equalize uh, without the presence of the harmful noisy environment. Then you would see a doctor. The doctor would give you an exam. Most people would see an ear, nose, and throat doctor who would give you an exam. What would you expect from that exam? Well, in most cases, the physical exam itself is normal uh, because the doctor would examine you to determine whether there may be a physical uh, condition that was accounting for hearing loss. The doctor would then uh, li likely refer you to the audiologist in his office to give you an audiogram or hearing test. And then based upon that hearing test, assuming that your physical exam is normal, the doctor would then give an opinion as to whether he believe, uh, believes that your hearing loss is related to your occupation. However, in order to be compensable under the New York State Workers' Compensation Law, your hearing loss must, uh, the, the parameters are 500 hertz to 3,000 hertz. And in order to constitute an occupational loss, the hearing has to be a be above uh, 25 decibels. So just for example, this is an audiogram, a typical audiogram, where you can see the doctor outlining the test. What I was just speaking about is that your hearing loss has to be within this area in order to be compensable. A lot of people usually have high frequency hearing loss. Unfortunately, high frequency hearing loss is not Com compensable. Um, and then once that is all taken into account, um, you've been ex out of the exposure for at least three months, you can then proceed to file a claim with the New York State Workers' Compensation Board. And what does that do if your workers' compensation claim is accepted or is 
these cases are usually controverted. The insurance company usually likes to fight these cases. Then what happens is, is we proceed to have a trial before the workers' compensation board. And if the case is eventually found compensable, based upon the percentage of your hearing loss and based upon the compensability scale or the schedule loss of use scale used by the workers' compensation board, you may be entitled to a cash award. And obviously, you may be entitled to hearing aids if those are necessary. And you may be entitled and obviously be entitled to reimbursement for hearing aids and future uh, battery replacement or replacement of the hearing aids down the road. So in the overall perspective, if you feel that you have an occupational hearing loss, um, your time limitation for filing is two years and 90 days from the date that you are removed from the harmful noisy environment. However, that's the general rule under Section 28 of the Workers' Compensation Law. However, Section 49 uh, double B does provide that if you're unaware that you have a hearing loss, and after that two years and 90 days, you go to a doctor and the doctor says, hey, you have hearing loss, and I think it's related to your prior occupation, you do have another 90-day window from the date of knowledge, even if you're outside the, the normal two-year 90-day statute of limitations. So if you feel that you were working in a harmful noisy environment and you feel that you might have hearing loss, you should proceed to have yourself examined by a doctor. And uh, obviously my office does handle those cases, those does handle those cases on a regular basis. Um, you don't need to ne necessarily proceed to a doctor first. If you feel that you have occupational hearing loss, or exposed to a harmful noisy environment and want to investigate that further, you can always contact my office and we would uh, gladly give you advice and direction on how to proceed with your potential claim. Thank you.